Hello, I'm the Dark Master, and welcome back to the history of Mississippi. In this episode, we will discuss the Devonian period, the fourth period of the Paleozoic. Lake Devonian rocks are the oldest rocks we have records of in Mississippi. These are still rare, however, and most are found in Black Warrior Basin in the northeast corner of Mississippi. Now, before we start describing this time, I want to start by saying something really important. I volunteered at the Mississippi Museum of Natural Science for a long time. If you go downstairs, there is a skull of the fierce predator, Dunkleosthesis, that greets you when you get downstairs in an exhibit showcasing the fossil history of Mississippi. Seeing that, after I started my YouTube channel, I knew I had to make this series. And as such, I would like to thank the Natural Science Museum for inspiring me to make this YouTube channel and video series. Let's start from the bottom and work our way top, shall we? The high seas of the Devonian had... Reefs still dominated by bryozoans, brachiopods, and the slightly newer corals. There are also the less familiar hadarelids and microcochids. Crinoids still flourished in the shallows with great biodiversity of species. Trilobites were still somewhat common. Five orders still existed at this time. But one could see there was trouble ahead as they continued to lose ground. Examples of the Devonian diversity of tribites include Pacoseops and Parajuros. Trilobites at this time developed a tendency of enrollment to avoid new predators on the scene. Eurypterids saw a decline in the seas of the Devonian. While the largest species ever to evolve, Jackalops, was thought to live in this era, especially in the early Devonian, the less surviving sea scorpions was the fairly small Edeloplatmus, which was the last of the true sea scorpions, the ones we consider as actual sea scorpions. The other group, however, the Stelurnias, the much less familiar branch of the Eurypterid family, saw the last major radiation of the Eurypterids. More closely resembling spiders or their relatives, the horseshoe crabs, their walking legs gave them new opportunities that enabled them to live side by side with fishes with minimum competition. These opportunities included scavengers such as Stylorurnia or Cocomiplerus, burying species such as Halipoteris, and sweep feeders such as Mega Arachne. Horseshoe crabs having emerged in the late Ordovician also existed at this time, such as Euprops. The first scorpions, believed to have evolved from Eurypterids, arrived at this time. Proscorpius emerged in the, from the early Devonian. They, along with predatory trigonotarids and mites, hunted millipedes, 
before being joined by larger predators such as Megarachne and the first tetrapods. While this was going on, the fish saw their own diversification event. The Devonian has even been called the age of fishes due to this explosive amount of diversity. The jawless fish Osteocoderms coexisted with the jawed fish for around 30 million years before undergoing extinction at the end of the Devonian period. Unless the lampreys are indeed descendants from Anapsida, in which case they have survived to modern day. However, this belief is controversial. The last new class of Osteocoderms emerged right before their eventual extinction. They were the pitiful Pilorapsidas, with a mere two species, Pitorapsis and Niambaspis. They looked somewhat like swimming guitar picks and were most likely burying species. While the Osteocoderms dwindled, the Placoderms exploded in diversity. The already existing Antarchy diversified into numerous bottom feeders, such as the bauxite Bothriolaptis. The top predators of the Devonian were the Arthrodires, the most famous of which was Duncleostesis, one of the large placoderms to have existed. However, it was not the only member of its family. There were also the smaller Cocosteus, which resembled a miniature Dunclestesis, and the even smaller Rolfosteus, which was a mere 11 inches. There was even Titanicthes, a species as big if not bigger than Dunclestesis, but was just a harmless filter feeder like modern whales. So they weren't all hostile killing machines. The antiarchs and the arthrodire placoderms were the most diverse families of the placoderms, but were not the only ones. There was Philolepida, a group of freshwater blind bottom feeders, similar to antiarchs. Phycotids were small shark like placoderms that are the only ones to exhibit sexual dimorphism, which is very s cool. A common theme among placoderms is that they were particularly diverse and uh, were often very much bottom feeders. With two more orders, the ray-like remedas and the spiny petalepsida being almost exclusively bottom feeders. There was the Ancanthodirax that resembled aforementioned Picodontida. The last three orders of placodonts are considered to be very controversial. There is a very basal single species order of placoderms, the Pseudopetalichidas, are a group that closely resembles the aforementioned Petacalids, but had larger fins. The final order of placodonts was the Stenscolidas, which contain a single species of problematic affinity. The Acathodian diversity peaked at this time, but in the Devonian, the freshwater environment saw the most species, as opposed to the previous Silurians marine species of Acathodians. They thrived in the rivers and swamps of the Devonian to early Permian before being slowly replaced by ray fin and lobe fin fish, the most famous example of which of these Acathodians is Acanthodes. In addition to the similar spiny sharks, the Middle Devonian saw the first true sharks. The very first was the very basal Cladiocinthes. Unlike modern sharks, they lacked scales for the most part. Sharks weren't the top predators yet. 
They were a mid-sized predator that often got eaten by large placoderms, such as Dunclostesis and other even bigger fishes. The Devonian also saw the emergence of fish you and I would recognize. The bony fish, like modern-day bass or catfish, evolved at this time, an early member of this group known as Limonis was one of the lower tiers of the food chain. The raffin fish are one of two classes of bony fish. The other were the lobe fins, which at this time ruled the rivers. The lobe fin fish were the dominant group in the freshwater rivers. Clecolapsis and other early ray fin fish had to watch out for larger lobe fins. Lobe fins, instead of bony spines, have fleshy stubs as fins. One of the earliest one was Picancelepis. It gave birth to giant predators like Hyernia and Rhizodons. Rhizodons are a group of huge lobe fin fish that ruled the rivers just like placodonts ruled the oceans. At first glance they resembled huge lungfish that would often leap out of the water to take in prey such as amphibians. Speaking of amphibians, the Devonians saw the very first tetrapods. These included Acanthostega, Ichthostega, and Hynerpodon, which evolved from fish such as Ellipsteg and Tetalic. Sadly, this world came to an end. The Devonian ended with an extinction event. This event, called the Devonian Mass Extinction, was the smallest of the Big Five, with a mere quote-unquote 70% of life when extinct. This event was ironically caused by land plants whose decomposed remains caused asphyxiation in the saltwater environments where placodonts lived. This leads up to the next period, the Carboniferous, which we will explore in the next episode of The History of Mississippi.